Welcome to the Sister Harriet Podcast, where we celebrate the power of showing up. I'm your host, Angela Denise Davis. Present. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. Present. I know I haven't been very present with this podcast. I looked back at the last episode and was shocked to know that it was a few months ago. And I'm sorry for that because I am terribly excited about the work that I'm doing in podcasting. And some of you know that I also host and produce another podcast, Zami Noble, the National Organization of Black Lesbians on Aging. So I'm juggling productions here. And this one has gone to the wayside. But I'm reclaiming my time and my space in the pot sphere with the Sister Harriet podcast. I hope you enjoy this episode and thanks for listening. I promise to be more present in 2019. Present. P R E S E N T. Present. The African American poet Gwendolyn Brooks, in her poem for Paul Robeson, wrote the following words We are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. Those words have been in my email signature for many years. And over those years, I've begun to fully appreciate the magnitude of Gwendolyn Brooks's words. At the end of this year and looking forward to next year, here is a good place to sit and to meditate on the gift of her words. So what does it mean at the back door of 2018, looking at the horizon of 2019 to contemplate those words? This is what I think it means. We are each other's harvest. I grew up in Wichita, Kansas, and every summer my mother and aunts would plant gardens and we would have the chores of watering and weeding and watching. Any farmer worth his or her salt will tell you it takes a lot of love and labor to tend a garden. If you expect a harvest at the end of the season, then you have to be committed to your work and trust that the universe will show up to do its work. We cannot control life's wind, rain, or even the sun that falls on our crops. But we can be committed to the work of being in relationship, being present with each other so that we can see our work will yield a multitude of fruit at the end of the season. To say that we are each other's harvest is to be real about the work it takes to be in relationship with each other, with our communities, with our nation, with other nations, with this globe, with this planet to be in relationship and to do the work that relationship requires for us to be present and to show up. We are each other's harvest, my friends. We are each other's business. I am sure that you've heard the saying, it's none your business. Whether that comes from the lips of a sassy child or a disdainful adult, what they're really saying is, This isn't about you. In our world, we can't say that to each other, for we are each other's business. What each one does affects the other. We have to be watchful not to fall into the false idea of hyper-independence. This idea that we can make it on our own Because it does take a village to plant and to harvest. We are each other's business. What affects 
your crop affects mine. We are each other's magnitude. Magnitude speaks about the greatness or a measure of possibilities. The gift of being on this planet and aware of being present with each other is knowing that sometimes we can't see outside of our peripheral vision. It is important that we are present as a community and stand together to be able to see the things that we are unable to see by ourselves. Therefore, we have some positive and helpful critique to reorient ourselves as we navigate the road of life. This critique often comes with skilled tongues, one that understand in order to usher people forward into greatness and not into grief is to understand the power of how we communicate with each other. Here, I think it is instructive to think about the Buddhist idea of minding our tongue. If something is truthful, but not helpful, don't say it. If something is not truthful, but helpful, don't say it. If something is not truthful and not helpful, certainly don't say it. But when something is both truthful and helpful, wait for the right time to say it. For the gift of your tongue and a wise word given at the right time equals the power of being able to add to someone's magnitude in this world. We are each other's bond. In both our personal and professional lives, the idea of stick to itness is highly valued. If you've ever been like me and you've purchase some of those 3M picture hooks. You get so excited, you come home, you take the hook out of the package, you put the dual-sided adhesive on the back and press the hook against the wall and place your picture on it, so excited about the work you've done. And you come back later to see that the picture is on the floor, the frame broken, the glass shattered. What went wrong? Then you read the instructions and understand that in order for the picture hook to hold any weight, it has to have time to set for the bond to seal. So it is in life that as we are in relationship with each other, we recognize the weight we present to each other and sometimes realize the heaviness we put on new relationships can't carry the weight. The measure of weight we can carry on our relationships 5, 10, 20, 30 years down the road is quite different from what we place on new relationships. As you think about going into a new year and new ventures and new opportunities and new friendships, think about the weight that you're putting on those relationships. Measure them well. Give them time to bond before placing heavy objects on them. Whether we're talking about romantic love, entrepreneurial startups, organizational coalitions, it is important for us to realize the truth of Gwendolyn Brooks's words. We are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. When we are present with that knowledge, however we show up in the world, we become a gift wherever we stand. At the edge of this year and going into next year, may her words be a gift to you, a present to you. We are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. Go forth and be present in the world and see the difference it will make. Present. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. Present. Present.